Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. I feel like my head is being cut off, so um, there we go. Uh, today, I, well, first of all, let me start over. Thanks for coming over to my channel. I know it's been a minute. I've, if you can hear, I've been fighting some kind of sinus gunk, um, but I'm better now, so I'm glad to be back and bringing you another vlog. A while ago, I got a request from someone to do a day in the life of an HR generalist. <coughs> Excuse me, so I've been trying to figure out the best way to do it and I think I've just jotted down like a schedule and then I'm gonna just hit a few things for you guys and I hope it's helpful. Um, if you have further questions or wanna know a little bit more, I'm gonna get my iPad, I, my laptop out of the way. Um, if you have further questions or wanna know more after this vlog, please leave them down the questions down in the um, comment section and I'll get back to you ASAP. So, <coughs> sorry guys, I'm gonna be probably coughing a lot and I hope not. I am taking this though, this is nasty, but I got it from Whole Foods and it's the bomb guys. So, if you guys are fighting this sinus drainage gunk cough, try this. Okay, that was my shameless plug. But anyway, so I'm gonna get started, and um, for those of you who are new to my channel, I am an HR generalist. I have a wealth of knowledge in HR. I've done several positions. I've done payroll, benefits. Right now I'm doing employee and labor relations. I've done heavy staffing and recruiting. That's the bulk of my experience. And I also teach, uh, Ad, I'm an adjunct professor at Strayer University and I teach HR courses there. So if I don't know anything else, I know HR. And I recently completed my certification, so now I'm certified. Woo woo, raise the roof. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm an HR journalist. I work for the District of Columbia and my job is mainly focused on employee and labor relations, but I jump in wherever I need it but let me put a little caveat here a true HR generalist touches everything but because I am a government employee and the way my department is set up we do things a little bit differently I might, I probably at, operate more as an HR specialist but I am versed in all areas so I can do a little of everything like I explained so but my day how it starts off. I get up between 6.30, 6.45, up and at them, I get dressed, I'm out the door, I grab food, and head to the train station. So I work driving probably 20 minutes from my job, but with traffic, it would take me longer than that, and I don't do well in traffic like I tend to have a little road rage, so, <laughs> and I like to relax and have my head right when I walk into work. I don't like to be discombobulated, agitated about the traffic, so I take the train. So I, you know, drive to the train station, I park my car, by 7.45, if my day is running right, I'm getting on the train. I'm at work and at my desk by 8.15. I'm supposed to be there at 8.30. Um, so I'd like to get there earlier, so if the train's moving, if I can get out a little earlier, if Barkley, uses the bathroom before I leave in the morning like he's supposed to, I can be at work at eight. That's my preference. So once I'm settled, I always go get some water. I keep water on my desk and just drink all day long. So once I've done all that, greeted my coworkers, etc., it's about 8.30 and that's when I start responding to emails, voicemails. I check my calendar and I also have a little notepad where I jot down like it's an agenda of what I need to do and touch base with my supervisor. She usually gets in between 8.30 and 9. So I just, you know, pop in, tell her what I got going on or whatever. But we all actually have a meeting every Tuesday morning where we go over everything, but this is just a regular day. I just pop in, hey, how you doing? Anything you need? This is what I'm working on, etc. By nine o'clock, that's when my day is really going. People are calling, coming in. Um, Anything I have to finish up from the day before or any projects I'm working on, this is when I jump into those. Um, any meetings I have, like if I'm meeting with employees, I try to schedule them after 10 to give me time to kind of prepare and get myself ready. Um, and then I also, some of those 
individuals that I have to meet with want me to come to them or whatever. Or I need to go by and drop by and take them something. I do that around 10 o'clock. And of course, now this is a caveat. If there are other meetings that I have to attend, you know, then of course I work those in wherever. But this is just me without a meeting, you know, having to do something. This is how I run my day. So by 12 o'clock... It's lunchtime. My lunch varies. Sometimes it's 12, sometimes it's 12.30, sometimes it's 1, 1 1.30. But generally, on a good day, lunchtime at 12. And then the block from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock, that's when um, a lot of the meetings occur, the committee meetings that I may be on or any other follow-up meetings I have to go to. And I continue to do my rounds around the office, make my calls, process anything that needs to go out that kind of thing and then at four o'clock i always try to touch base with my supervisor provide her with any updates or get any help that i may need from her um by 4 30 i begin wrapping up my day and then i create again another agenda to t agenda to tackle for the next day and at between 5 and 5 15 i try to head out the door again depending on what i'm working on it may be later than that Okay, so that's kind of what my day looks like. Um, but like I said, that's just a rough schedule. Any day, something can change and throw me off schedule. But I want I did print out some things that I wanted to share. Um, and I got it off the internet. And it's the HR generalist variety keeps you sharp. So like I mentioned to you guys, the role of an HR generalist... Um, you focus on a lot of things. You you know have a variety of assignments and jobs. So in order to stay up on all facets of HR, it requires you to do a, you know a lot of reading, connecting, and you know keep your brain working. So what they say here, generalists are rarely focused on any one part of their role for too long. If you thrive on variety, it could be for you. If you, in order to stay up to speed, all of the facets of HR require a fair amount of reading, connecting, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, um, broad experience. Being in a generalist role can often, oftentimes give you broad exposure across the organization. More access means more opportunity to have an Im impact and value to the business and live in the lives of those impacted by it. That's certainly not to say that you don't get that ability in a specialty role, but it's almost built into your description as a generalist, which is true, and I had I told you guys that. Um, there can be too much of a good thing. You may love recruiting. That's great, but recruiting all day, every day could lose its appeal after a while. That is true. It's a nice job to be able to think differently for a few weeks before jumping on to the next job. Walking away from a certain type of project gives you the benefit of fresh perspective when the new requisition inevitably appears and you're recruiting once again. So a requisition is um, like a, a job that comes in, a new job. They call it a rec. Uh, so with the good comes the bad. Even in, in HR, no role is perfect. We all know that in our hearts of heart of hearts, even if you spend 90, 95% of your time doing what you love, there will always be slightly less riveting or potentially painful 5%. Let's face it, to be able to love the huge part of your job is pretty sweet, even if it's not all the time. We spend so much of our time in work, our mm, spend so much of our time at work that it would be a real shame not to enjoy it. Do your best to focus on the wonderful parts of your job, even when you're trapped in that project that is less joyful. So, <clears throat> what would be the part that is not my cup of tea? I did not like payroll, per se, that much, and benefits. That's, that Out of all the HR areas, that probably would be my least favorite. Um, and then there was another thing I found, a day in the life of an HR professional. She's actually an HR manager out of Washington. I found this on Google as well. Her name is Kim Halsey. And basically, kind of like what I said, her day starts a little earlier than me. She's up at 5 a.m. Um, 8 o'clock, she's checking her voicemails and emails. 9 o'clock, she has drop-ins and she has an open-door policy. And I think most HR departments do. I know we do. Um, at 9.30, she starts her recruiting. 10.30, she has a snack. I didn't even put my snack time in because depending on my day, I might not get a snack. 11 o'clock, she has meetings. 12.30... 
Um, she has a safety committee meeting, so she's probably on risk management. We have a risk management officer in our office. Um, so sometimes I help her out with stuff as well. One o'clock, she has lunch. Two o'clock, she prepares for a training. Now, our, I do trainings as well. That's one of my main job between employee labor relations and training. That's my assigned area. But we don't do trainings every day. We have scheduled trainings different parts of the month. So in my agenda that I gave you guys, I didn't include that as a training day. But I would adjust my schedule accordingly if I have a training set up for that week. And we train on various things, um, mainly for our managers, um, helping them be better managers. So it could be performance management. It could be progressive discipline. You know, depending on the need is what we have. And then, of course, we have our annual and biannual sexual harassment training. Um, and yeah, her day kind of seems like mine. She mentions that she has two cell phones. So I have a business phone and my personal phone. And any meeting I go to, I have both of them. Um, and I think that is it, guys. I do also telework, and I've mentioned that to you. And so my telework day <clears throat> looks very similar, um, except I'm at home. So I get up at the same time. And if you guys have been watching me for a while, I did a video on tips on teleworking um, a couple of months ago. So you can look at that. But basically, um, I get up at the same time. I get dressed. Like, you know, I may not have on a suit or whatever, but I am dressed for the day. Because if I lay in my pajamas, I don't feel I'll be productive. So I get up, I do my work. Um, start working at 8.30 like I would if I was in the office. Uh, I take a break at 12, like a lunch break. And I just eat my lunch here and watch the news, the 12, 12 to 12.30 news. Um, by the afternoon, I'm still doing whatever. This is, now let me say this, with my telework, I tend to save the big projects I'm working on or case reviews that I have to do on those days. Um, I schedule meetings on Mondays, and you know, like with my calendar for the week. So that's my day of reaching out with people, scheduling meetings and things. That's more my clerical day, I'll say that. Any, I have a spreadsheet that I have to maintain several spreadsheets so i update my spreadsheets on mondays things like that but i'm still working all day and i shut down at five o'clock just like i would at work i keep my work phone with me so people can call me just like i'm sitting at my desk and i have that on my signature line at work um you know that i telework on mondays and i have my cell phone there so guys i hope this was helpful i do love hr um so if you have questions and you know want to know more please reach out to me i do um you know when they ask you would you recommend someone to be an hr generalist or specialist yes because i love it is it easy no it's it's a wonderful fulfilling job but i will be honest though the thing that i don't like about hr we're human resources and I like to keep the human in resources and I like to be motivating and encouraging and supportive. But then there's the days I don't like the disciplines. I don't like having to terminate people. That's the hard part. Um, so that would be the down part of HR. Some days it's a really great day and some days it's a bad day. Because no, regardless of what people do, you still never like having to terminate someone or you know have that difficult conversation so that would be the downside but other than that i love it i love interacting with people i love helping people it's nothing more fulfilling to me than when i was staffing <coughs> helping people um get a job when i was recruiting you know landing that job interviewing them and giving them that job offer i love that payroll it was nothing like you know, correcting someone's paycheck or helping them out with whatever they may need, um, you know, regarding their salary or any kind of retro pay, anything that, you know, giving them that check, a bonus check. I like that part. Medical benefits, nothing better than helping somebody sign up for their benefits and getting them straight, especially like after a new marriage or a new baby, you know, because they're very thankful and you know, you just feel like you're doing something really good. Um, performance management, giving people, well, I don't give the reviews, but, you know, helping managers get those reviews in, you know, to share with their employees. So things like that, I really enjoy. So 
I hope I didn't blab too much, but I did want to honor the request of sharing what a day in the life of an HR journalist looks like. A lot of stuff I can't share because it's confidential, but you know, you do have those meetings that don't go as well and you have to share information with them or hear things you don't like to hear, you know, cause every workplace isn't perfect, but it's the nature of the beast. So thanks for watching guys. Um, please like, subscribe and share with a friend. Still trying to grow on my channel. And if you have any other requests, feel free to leave them in the comments. All right, take care guys. See you in the next vlog. Bye.